I say. The kids like lots of movement these days. <laughs> in their they just got it in that transition, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. 103, huh? Okay. This is a good one. So do you act like you know more than you really do? Why? I, well, for one thing, I think that I know the answer to a question like that. <laughs> so that could be an example. <laughs> more than I actually do. The irony. But I like to think I know, on some level at least, like, I think part of it is because, like, there's a, a shadow side and a light side. And the shadow side is like, I think, well, it, it, I understand the essence to a lot of things, but I don't know them enough to talk about them probably, mm. but I want to communicate the essence. And part of that comes from also like not paying full attention throughout my life to in school to people that kind of thing and that affecting how much i truly know and i all think that i know and can communicate more than i actually can and i think that's just now something i'm becoming aware of mm. you know <clears throat> and i think Another, like, more shadowy part of that is that knowing things was important to my dad. And so if you knew things, then you were good. So I think that plays probably a more immediate family dynamic role in that, that it wasn't good to not know. So. Mm -hmm. So all these years, I thought you knew things you don't know things, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm humble. Right. She's a not knowing bitch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I find out. <laughs> yeah. On international. Number 20. In what way have you not acted in integrity recently? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is I think that I was uh, in a conflict and discussion with Amanda here, and uh, I was not following certain rules of good communication, such as using uh, questioning and listening well and not interrupting <laughs> and so I think that that doesn't have integrity but uh, you know I am a sensitive man <laughs> passionate man expressive man I'm blocking his throat chakra so I appreciate she forgives when I'm not in integrity and uh, allows me to continue to work on being more in integrity that's cute. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Are you guys gonna fuck now? <laughs> That's what Zelda is. Need a chip and pass your book. <laughs> That's good. Uh. Please don't chew too loudly and too loudly. Even if this is just for Christy. 31. Sorry. <laughs> Play the role of the victim. Mm. I was just listening to that song by Alanis Morissette earlier where she said she ain't gonna do that no more. I was yeah. like, oh, girl. <laughs> Again, this falls into the self sabotage area of like stuff I'm just beginning to look at. So I feel like this is a question that deserves a lot more attention than I've given it thus far. Mm. So there's that perfectionist part of me that wants to be totally, I'm good right now, wants to be like totally vulnerable and knowing of myself and that I know how I play a victim. <laughs> I don't, I, there's probably a lot of ways I do it that I haven't 
seen yet, I guess. But some of the ways in which I do know, I think it's just a It's really like subtle, or it feels subtle to me. I don't know how it looks on the outside, but it feels subtle to me because there are times, I guess, when I play the role of a victim, I really think I am a victim. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like victimhood. But. I think just slip like on a spirit level, like slipping into despair, slipping into depression, the addiction of anxiety and depression immobilizing me. And that I've used my I know, I've used my depression and my bad childhood in a way that has I've let enable my victimhood and taking care of myself. And now that I've like actually dealt with it, it's like there's justification in some of it and in, in why I was in a place where I was playing a victim, where I felt so victimized by life and stuff because there was a lot of fucked up shit. But on a broader level, it was just like, it was a role. And it was again like late like laziness that Osho Zen laziness. Mm. So I like I feel like and I feel like with realizing how much I want and I'm ready to like let go of depression and anxiety from my like daily life, my person. I realize that I have to step up in a way that I've never required of myself. And that brings home that, that playing the victim, the ways in which I play the victim. Mm -hmm. You know, being late to work and feeling justified because of being devastated because of a breakup or, or some low self-esteem issue that just felt so consuming and that being justification for not being a reliable person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the biggest right now. Mm -hmm. The battery light's blinking. Well, let's let it run as long as it can, see if we'll get in this last one. If not, no big whoop. Number 12. Oh, you had 12, huh? Or did you have 12? Yeah. How have you used your sexuality to get what you want? Well, fortunately for the ladies out there, I haven't been able to. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting question, you know. I. I haven't looked at these yet in that personal reflection way. 